lunch. Again, we're not, it's customary for the speaker's door to be locked. It's not customary for the speaker not to answer the door or his staff. So we'll keep trying. Uh, we won't be here forever, but we will use a little biblical analogy of the unjust judge and the woman who came and knocked on his door. So um, I'll knock a couple more times. And I, I will say this. It would be an absolute disgrace if Speaker Boehner, staff, did not answer the door to the people who helped get him the largest Republican majority in a generation. It would be an absolute disgrace. So we will continue to try politely, and uh, we'll see what happens. They knew we were coming, by the way, so. Wait just a moment longer. You know what? If, uh, so here's what I think we should do, and I want to get this on film. You represent states from all across America. I'm looking at California, Kansas, New Mexico, California, Michigan. Each one of you come. We want to get this on film and knock on Speaker Boehner's door. That people from all across America are coming here. Okay, and um, so um, Kate, if we can get this on, I don't know if you can stop it. And here's, here's what I want to say. This baby is not yet on Speaker Boehner's door. Where was this law to protect me? Okay, let's have Walter come down. My wife and I represent the Issue Life Foundation. We represent the pro life community. We're certainly representing the black men community. And we're not going to speak with them. Our generation is often tagged as being extremely cynical and, and as if we don't, like we're not very patriotic. And, and this is one of the reasons. We're here in earnest asking the first speaker to open this door and asking him to protect children. And his staff, as far as we know, we're not speaking there ignoring us. And we're here. Just everyone come quickly. My name is Gwen Everett. And Marilyn has like the least restrictions um, regarding abortion, so much so that we have uh, Leroy Carhart who flies into Maryland, Germantown, and does late term abortions. And a woman died was it a year ago. He's killed two women and then flies back to wherever he somewhere in the Midwest and um, we need this to stop. So. Okay, next. I'm Bud Shaver, Executive Director of Protest Albuquerque, and we had a petition where um, um, mostly New Mexicans actually signed a petition to ban late term abortion. We've tried um, in New Mexico. Uh, we have the first city in the history of America to try and attempt to ban um, restrict abortion at any level. Um, we also, the first time, um, the New Mexico House of Representatives uh, had the majority in this, this session. And the very first pro life bill to ever pass historically through um, the House in New Mexico was a late term abortion ban. And so we're here. We're used to obstruction from the pro abortion community, uh, the pro abortion politicians, the pro abortion Senate majority in New Mexico killed that bill. And we're not, we're hoping that um, the Republican majority here in New Mexico and um, in the nation's capital won't um, echo um, the obstruction of uh, radical pro abortion extremists in New Mexico in the, um, in the nation's capital. So that's why we're knocking on New Mexico. Uh, show the photo. Show the photo. 
Okay, let's just move as quickly as we can here now. My name is James Conrad, the survivor of the abortion holocaust. I think it's a trial that not for justice, so I'm knocking on the innervative door for justice. Anyone else? Here, can I get the I'm a survivor of an illegal abortion, and I also am an abortion post abortion program, and I'm a doctor Eric Scheidler from the Pulley Fashion in Chicago. Speaker Rainer, the voters of Illinois know that you're pro-life. We know that you're a pro-life leader, and we want you to do the right thing. And we know that you want to do the right thing. Call for a vote on this bill. Ban these barbaric late-term abortions. We want to hear your answer. And then Fondy Bryan, oh, Cheryl, sorry, Cheryl and Bryan. Um, I'm Cheryl Fondy, I'm with Operation Rescue. This is a picture of a little baby. His little hands will never um, embrace his mother. Um, he will never be able to play on the playground or anything else. Um, and it's because we don't have a bill that will protect unborn babies um, in the late stages of pregnancy. And so we're asking with a sense of urgency that Speaker Boehner move this bill forward immediately. And then finally, Brian. I'm Brian Gibson with Pro-Life Action Ministries out of uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul area of Minnesota. And uh, I'm here to tell Speaker Boehner, or staff at least, that it's time that Congress start protecting children, start taking the pro-life cause serious. They're in Congress. They're elected because they're pro-life. So it's time to start acting as such. Angela Clark, and I'm from Virginia. Abortions are committed in the late term uh, in Maryland and D.C. We're nestled right between both of them. Please stop this. We're going to close now. We just want to remind you if a vote is not held quickly, we plan a massive event in the next month or so. But I have to say this. It is with a sense of profound sadness that as I look around and see people from New Mexico, Kansas, Alabama, California, Michigan, Massachusetts, Massachusetts that Speaker Boehner, the people who helped make him Speaker, he did not even have the decency or courtesy or decorum to even answer the door and talk with us. I find that extremely troubling. What? Justin Siggins with Life Site News. Did you request a meeting with the speaker? Have you gone through the steps to try to meet with him and discuss this issue? Yes, they knew we were coming. We've contacted them in the past. He knew we were going to be here at this time. That's not my question. My question is, did you request a meeting? Obviously, they were in recess this week. I'm sure. In recess. So they knew you were coming. That does not say that the speaker is going to be able, be able to be sure. here. It's a congressional recess. We knew the speaker wouldn't be here. We knew Congress is not in session right now. They knew we were going to be here. We were here to pray. We were here to talk. We were here to share. I think perhaps the better question is to be, and I'm sure you will, ask them why they didn't answer the door. And I guess we have to really wonder, this is not normal procedure. I've knocked on this door and gone in many times. So I think the better question is, why, why didn't they answer the door? 